My first impressions of the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro, the second video publishing today. So, what happened today? I did a six mile threshold run uh, in this shoe. I'll just say I held 520 per mile pace. And yes, I tried to go basically fast in this shoe because this is a fast shoe. It's a very lightweight, fast racing shoe. You can use it for workouts as well, but I would put it more in the category of a racing flat. I will just say this is not my full review. We'll do that. I don't know if we'll take this shoe to 50 miles, but we'll do that after two, three, four runs for a full review. This is just my first impression after taking it out for the first time today. And yes, I've been sitting on the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro for two months because it's been very uh, snowy here in Denver, Colorado. So it's just, it hasn't been great conditions for taking this shoe out, but today it was 70 degrees. It was incredible, just beautiful out, and it was the perfect moment to take this guy out. And a little brief history on Reebok. I had no idea this Reebok was founded in Britain. I feel a little bad. Sorry to all the Brits out there. I didn't realize that uh, in 19, I think it was 58, uh, Reebok was started alongside another apparel company. And I probably should have known that the company started in England and in Britain because I guess the uh, classic line of Reebok apparel has the Union Jack uh, flag uh, associated. I should have made that connection. But now the global headquarters are based out of Boston, which I think... I think New Balance is based there. Is Saucony based out of Boston as well, or at least in the, the greater Boston area? So there's a lot of shoe, running shoe action happening in Boston right now. And moving on to some specs for the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro. Just over three ounces in my size. It's being advertised, I think, for as 3.5 ounces. Just over three ounces. I think that's 87 grams, correct me if I'm wrong, about 90, about, let's just call it 90 grams. Guys, three ounces. We're talking a very, very lightweight running shoe. For the drop on this shoe, from heel to toe, a six millimeter drop, and that's my wheelhouse. I, I appreciate uh, 10 millimeter drops. A lot of Nike shoes are in the 10 millimeter range, but I really love that six millimeter drop. So from heel to toe and for the stack height, we're talking about a 18 uh, millimeter stack height in the heel and a 12 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. All right, let's move on to the upper. It is a, so the fabric on the upper here is an engineered mesh and it's, I'll just put it this way. It has a ton of holes in it. And yes, I think Reebok's, you know, trying to uh, eliminate as much weight as possible with this shoe, but you're just holding it up. You can see there's a ton, of, a ton of holes in there. And I think on a really, really hot day, that would be really nice to get some airflow and ventilation uh, through the shoe. So it didn't bother me at all, like having those holes. And I'll just mention also the tongue is paper thin really thin through the tongue. And again, it looks like it, they took one of those uh, three hole punches and just put, put holes through the tongue there. Uh, it took a little bit of uh, extra effort to get the tongue situated on the top of my foot in order to protect the top of my foot from the lacing system. But it wasn't, um, it wasn't too, it did take too much time, but I did have to pay a little more attention because it is so paper thin uh, through the tongue that it didn't just, it didn't want to just lay flat on the top of my foot, uh, but no, no major issue there. And let's talk about that midsole real quick. It's Peebax foam, Peebax, P-E-B-A-X and it is uh, patented. That foam is patented by a French company. And <laughs> I think it's pretty special, everybody. Uh, very lightweight. Uh, the big question will become, as I put more runs in into the shoe, what will be the energy return th with this PBAX foam? Like, uh, yes, it's lightweight, which is awesome, you know, through your gait cycle as you're trying to go fast, but will I be getting some energy return? So as you land on the ground, uh, you want a little bit of spring uh, from the shoe to be given back to your gait cycle so you can continue on to your next stride and your next stride. So that'll be the big question mark for me through the midsole. Uh, what, will, what will the energy return be? And then moving on to the outsole. 
I don't even know how else to describe it other than to say, I gotta read this. The nubby outsole is yet another unique piece of the Pro. Rubber is one of the heaviest compounds on the shoe, so the brand got creative. Uh, the team at Reebok figured out how to glue little pods onto one piece, the outsole, and then stick that to the bottom of the, sh of the shoe. So it's just a 0.75 millimeter piece. Each one of those little nubbies is a little piece of polyurethane molded together and popped on the bottom. Uh, while it looks almost like a golf shoe, and actually, as I was running today, I was thinking to myself, that outsole, it either looks like a tennis shoe, and then I was like, you know what? It kind of reminds me of a golf shoe. I haven't done a ton of golfing in my life, but it has that similar look to it. The spike-like PU pieces worked on every surface I tried, from wet and dry roads to wood slats to concrete to grass. So that's a little bit about the outsole there. So basically what they're trying to do is eliminate some of the necessary rubber through the outsole in order to save weight. If this was one piece of rubber on the outsole, it might weigh another half an ounce, ounce, I don't know. Uh, so kudos Reebok for really pushing the boundaries. A lot of times we talk about the midsole and the upper, but to push the boundaries on the outsole gets me pretty darn excited. As far as fit goes, I went uh, a half size down. Now this is gonna be a racing shoe for me, and I'll just tell you right now, um, <laughs> 5K, 10K for sure probably more in the direction of a 5k, okay? Fast 5k shoe. You could race a 10k in it for sure. Could you do a half marathon? You could. Yeah, you could. I think there's probably better options out there. And the heel counter, so this is the collar of the shoe right here, and then this right here is the heel counter. Basically, it allows, it helps uh, lock down your Achilles area, your heel, so that you don't get any slipping. And sure enough, it did the trick today at 520 pace. I didn't feel any heel slipping uh, through the heel counter. And last but not least, I do have to talk about the price. Ah, uh, 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 $250. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, it's really expensive. I think Reebok is is putting their hand in the game to to push back against the Vaporfly, to push back, well, now against the, uh, the Asics Meta Ride. Like, $250 is very expensive. So, oh man, uh, maybe wait for a sale. I will say they put a lot of thought into this shoe, and I really appreciate that they uh, are making an effort to push the boundaries with respect to the weight of a shoe. Um, I appreciate it. And guess what? The Cookie Chase 5K in April 7th or 8th in Denver, I'm racing it. Yes, I will be racing in this shoe. Absolutely, absolutely. And my gut reaction, my final thoughts, um, would I recommend it? Absolutely. At $250, probably not. I managed to find a pair from the UK for $180. Don't ask me what website it was from. I'll have to look it up. If you if you really want to know, I'll do some more research to find it. But anyway, so I paid $180. I know that's still very expensive. Is it a $250 shoe? Probably not. Like that's just too much money. But $180, yeah, now we're starting to talk about something. So I am, I'm very excited. I don't know how fast I can run a 5k in right now, but um, I do believe this shoe is going to help me get across the finish line as fast as possible. And the keyword is float for the float ride run fast pro. And the question of the day, it's actually going to duplicate from the vlog from this morning. And I'm also going to ask one second one in case you already answered that in the first vlog. Basically, uh, are you shooting for a PR in 2019? If so, what distance are you honing in on? Are you dialing into, okay? So that's the first option or the second option for the question of the day. How was your run today? What did you do? Where did you go explore? Maybe you did a workout. Maybe you did a long run. Maybe you did, uh, who knows? Maybe you went up into the mountains. So, and there you have it. Okay, I'm gonna make a, a request. If you're still watching, thank you for watching this entire video. Could you share this video with people, runners that you know who really are interested in shooting for PRs at the 5K and 10K distance. I'd appreciate it if you could just grab the link, spread it around on social media. Maybe you can email it out to someone because I do think thus far, now listen, I know it's expensive, but thus far, this guy's winning the cake for me in 2019 with respect to chasing down PRs. All right, that's it for today. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. So